So recall that displacement is a vector. That means it has both magnitude as well as direction. Now, although sometimes displacement and distance will mean the same thing, for the most part, they're two different things. Distance is the actual path our object took, while our displacement is the net path our object took. So let's look at the graph of displacement in meters versus our time in seconds that it took our object to displace some given amount of meters. And let's look at the period from 0 seconds to 20 seconds. Let's see what the curve can tell us about our object's motion. So from 0 to 20 seconds, we have a positive straight line. And that means our slope stays the same at this period, at this uh, interval. And that means since our slope is constant, that means our velocity must be constant. Because what this slope tells us or what any slope tells us on displacement versus time graph is the instantaneous velocity, the velocity at some given instant of our object. So if we try to find the slope of this graph, we have to do it by finding change in y divided by change in x. So we go from 0 to 40 and from 0 to 20 seconds. So to find the slope, we simply divide our y final, which is 40, uh, 40 meters, divided by 0, or minus 0, divided by 20 minus 0, and that gives us 40 meters divided by 20 seconds for our change in y over change in x. And so our velocity at this point on this interval is 2 meters per second in the positive direction. So if we define our positive direction going this way, <coughs> that means from, tw from 0 to 20 seconds, our object is moving in the positive direction going this way with, <coughs> with a constant velocity of 2 meters per second. And that means because our velocity is not changing, its magnitude as well as direction stays the same, our object is not accelerating. Because by definition for our object to accelerate, it must change either its direction or its magnitude of the velocity vector. So now let's look at this interval. Let's look at what happens when we go from 20 to 30 seconds. So from 20 to 30, we see that we have a straight line. Well, a constant slope, but a straight line. And that means if we try to find our change in y over change in x, we go 40 to 40. And so 40 minus 40 gives us 0. So our numerator, our top portion of our ratio, goes to 0. And that means our velocity from this point to this point is 0. Our object is not moving. So it's traveling at 2 meters per second all the way up to this point and at 20 seconds it stops, it comes to a halt and then it waits 10 seconds and it doesn't move and if it doesn't move that means it's not accelerating because if the velocity is zero that means our change in velocity is also zero so our acceleration must be zero so let's look at the next interval let's look at what happens when we go from 30 seconds to 40 seconds and now we also have a constant slope. Our slope is a straight line, but now it's pointing downward. And what that means is our direction of our velocity has been reversed. Now instead of going this way, our velocity, our object, is traveling this way. So to find our magnitude, once again, we simply solve for the slope. So change in y divided by change in x. And we see that we get negative 10 meters. So we go 10 meters when we go from here to here. And it takes 10 seconds. So our slope is negative 1 meters per second. So our magnitude of our velocity is 1 meter per second going in the reverse direction. So notice that when our object was going from this point to this point, it traveled a displacement or a distance of 40 meters. And here it traveled a displacement of 0 and here it traveled a distance of 10 meters. So that means at this point our displacement is 30 meters. So now let's look at this next interval. This next interval is the same interval as this. So our slope here is 0 because we have a straight constant line. So our object's velocity is 0 and its acceleration 
is zero. So now let's look at the final uh, period. Let's look at what happens from 50 seconds to 60 seconds. Well, from here to here, we see that our slope is not constant. Our slope is changing. Initially, our slope is very steep, going downward. So it's steep in a negative direction. And that means our velocity is no longer constant. Our velocity is changing this entire time. So initially, our velocity is, is very high, is very steep, and then it goes and goes and goes and becomes and levels off. And what that basically means is that our object is in fact accelerating because both its direction as well as its magnitude of the velocity of the instantaneous velocity is changing at every given point in time on this interval from 50 seconds to 60 seconds. So, but when it gets to 60 seconds, we see that our object goes back to the same exact position. Because notice, at this point, it was traveling away from our initial position. Here it stopped, and here it began traveling back to the position that it started at. So, when our object gets to this point in time, it goes back to its initial position because its displacement is zero meters. Even though it traveled some unknown distance, its displacement is still zero. What it basically did is it went from point A, went to some point B, and went back to point A. Now, once again, to recap, a positive constant slope simply means our velocity is constant, so it's not accelerating, and our object is moving, say, in this direction. A, a straight line going this way with a slope of zero simply means that our object is not or is not moving. It does not have a velocity and so it's not accelerating. A downward, a negative constant slope simply means that our object is moving with constant velocity so it's not accelerating but it's moving in the reverse direction of our positive direction. And a changing line, a changing slope means that our instantaneous velocity is changing at every given point in time. And so our object is in fact accelerating. Now note that our area of this does not represent anything. We'll see in a second that in other graphs the area does represent something like for example displacement or distance traveled. But in this case this area or taking the area of this um, of the inside region of this uh, curve does not actually give us anything useful.